So my first question would be, what do you think the ideal age is? I want to say younger, probably in my 20s. I started in Hollywood and I made my first three movies the first year I got there. So that was probably a highlight year for me. What is maturity? When does it occur and is it determined on age? With me, maturity never happens. <laughs> I, my parents are going to be 90 this year and they act immature in a good way and I've always had that immature streak in me and I, I, I hold dear to that. I love it, being immature. I don't think anybody should ever try to grow up. I think, I think back in the day, our parents, my parents anyway, at my age, were you, at 40 years old, you had to look mature. You had to act mature. Not me. Where does middle age start and stop? I don't know. Uh, I turned 63 last week. March 12th. And when I turned 60, I, uh, bones started getting a little creaky. Mm -hmm. You know, middle age used to be in the 40s. Maybe they're now at the 60s level. Uh, I know when I was in my 40s, I had a young face thanks to my parents. I go, oh, people go, you're 49? Wow, you look like you're 39. And then when I hit 50, everything started sagging. <laughs> so now I go like that. So maybe middle age starts when I was 50. When would you say you are too old to go to school? Never. Absolutely never. When would you say you are too old to change your career? Never. When would you say you are too old to work? Never. Again, uh, it, but if it's physical labor, I think the body starts giving out, but I always try to stay in shape. <laughs> uh, but so hopefully that would never give out, but obviously it's going to. You know. When would you say you are too old to start the family? Are you asking these two old questions? Because I look old. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> well, for a woman, that would be around 40s, I guess, you know, with menopause and all that. For a man, you know, you hear the actors and people can have babies when they're, you know, in their 80s. I think I'm done. I have a 32-year-old <laughs> daughter and two grandsons. When would you say you are too old to start over? Never. When you're dead in the grave. <laughs> <laughs> When would you say you are too old to get promoted? Never. When would you say you are too old to learn new technologies? Well, as long as the brain holds out, hopefully. Never. Why? I didn't know all the questions were too old. <laughs> <laughs> when does life transition? How do you manage transition? And how does one prepare for transition? Transition to, into life death? Life transition. Or? Like changing your career or... I don't over. think there would be an age on that. I think it'd be any time. When does a transition happen? Pro when you feel it in your heart. I have a good example. I quit drinking when I turned 50. I just got up and did it and you know it was kind of biting me in the ass and I partied my whole life and I said okay I think it's time to quit drinking. I still party just don't drink with it. So that was a big transition at 50 years old. What do people in their 20s and people in their 50s have in common? Well, if it's me, it's good looks. <laughs> <laughs> what is success? I guess doing what you want to do and be very happy at it. Like, I'm an actor and I just, I, it's like I'm being paid to work, so it's not really work. So for me, that is successful, doing movies. Does age bring wisdom? Yes, definitely. You know, not always, but for me anyway. Uh, I play drums and I, at one point in my 30s, I said, well, gee, I've copied all the great drummers of the world, so I guess I could probably be considered the best drummer in the world. I mean, you talk about an ego and then, oh, gee, you can always learn. And the older I get, the more you learn that you can learn. Also, the more you learn, you don't know. You know, you can, you say, oh yeah, I know about the Vietnam War. And somebody goes, well, what about this? You go, oh, I didn't know that. Or you find out some belief all your life isn't true. You know, like, what? So you always are learning. Is it important for people to have friendships across generations? I don't know if it's important. I think it's great, you know, if you can do that. Like you and me, you know, mm -hmm. you're young and I'm old. Did you hear that all these questions that started out when you were gone were all, at what age? Does old age mean this? Is old age that? I'm going, what? What's with the old age shit? I go, are you picking on me? <laughs> Do you have a mentor? No. Uh, I've always idolized certain actors like Marlon Brando and Paul Newman. Uh, but I finished my first book, Parker Strip, and Tony Viana has helped me get it published. We met on the phone 
five, six years ago, and he wanted to know how to tips on screenplay writing. And then years later, I wanted to know tips on book writing. So I'll, right now in this uh, situation, it's Tony Viana. Do you mentor? Hmm? Do you mentor? Am I mental? If you mentor I'm other... Like, <laughs> anybody who has any mind. questions, well, I just gave an example. Tony called me about screenwriting. If anybody, you know, with, with acting, I had an acting class in the 80s for five years. And forgive if I'm bragging, but a lot of people came to me for advice. I guess I was respected in the class. Uh, and I, I was really proud of that. So I would be more than happy to help anytime, any place. Uh, I don't have a specific person I'm mentoring, except my daughter. We are constantly on the phone. I'm, I'm closer to my daughter. She's closer to me than I think she is her mother. Who do you look to for advice? My daughter, my girlfriend quite a bit, Gloria, Tony. Anybody who's around given a certain subject that I'm not familiar with, I'll ask a hundred questions. And I'm not embarrassed to ask questions three and four times in a row. And I always pre-warn them. I go, now what did you say yesterday? <laughs> what do you see as your generation's greatest accomplishment? Rock and roll. What do you see as your generation's greatest misconception? My generation's greatest misconception, dare I say free love, because that was the hippie thing, you know, and everybody was, you know, winking everybody, <laughs> and, um, as well as I was. <laughs> so, free love, you know, it's a little more meaningful than just... Everyone has a book in them. What is your title? Hmm. Uh, let me think. Uh, oh, Parker Strip. <laughs> this is my first novel, as I said, and I just finished it. Um, what do you think makes a life well lived? Having friends, giving as much love as you can, and not that sex kind of love. Well, that too, I guess. But <laughs> Like the Beatles sing, the love you make is equal to the love you take. So the more, for instance, I will compliment anybody, man, woman, anything on looks, on whatever they do, just out of the blue, a stranger at a coffee shop. You know, I'll go, oh, nice eyes, and not trying to pick them up. I used to try to pick them up, but you know, beautiful eyes, beautiful, you know, and, Oh, that was smart. This is so I think people thrive on compliments and why not? It makes the world go wrong. What do you think the perfect age is? You already asked me that. We want to see if your perception changes during this interview. <laughs> I, so you're trying to catch me in a lie, in other words. <laughs> I said in my 20s because that's when I went to Hollywood and made my first three movies for me. But let me add to that, the older you get, you know, at 63, you gain more knowledge. And so this is a perfect age, you know, current and present.